Libra, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a 2024 reading for you. We're gonna dive into 2024, see what we've got coming up. Um, we're gonna do a nine card spread. Past, present, future. The past is what you're bringing into the year. Present energy, obviously the energy you're gonna be dealing with. And the future energy is the potential outcome. I'll also be able to read positives, negatives, as well as your advised next steps. It will make sense to me and I will try my best to portray that to you. Um, you can watch this for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your seventh house, this could be for you. Once again, thank you for the continued support. You know the drill. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. Whichever way you support the channel in any format, it's wonderful. So thank you very much indeed. Uh, cross watches, you're more than welcome. Message may well be for you. All the information is in the description box, including the website link for private reads, if you so wish. So... Libra, what's going on? Let's do three more. Okay, so your past energy, bring it in. Okay. I quite like this. There's been a shift in your life, I feel. A lot more confidence. Current energies. Okay. And the potential outcome, wow. Nice. Okay, interesting, we have death, we have the king of cups, we have the six of pentacles, the nine of pentacles, temperance and the nine of wands. Strong Sagittarius energy here with temperance and the nine of wands. So we've got temperance and uh, Sagittarius and then moon in Sagittarius. Eight of pentacles, two of swords, ace of pentacles, strength and the hierophant. Okay, interesting. So... First card out is Jupiter. Jupiter is the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, we also have the Queen of Wands and we have the Seven of Pentacles. I believe this is, there is there's been a shift. Uh, Jupiter is going to play a significant part this year for you. It's going to be in your ninth house of spirituality, travel, um, especially travel. Travel seems to be a very significant thing for you this year. Um, it's going to be highlighting um, issues with law, possibly. Um, not, a, not a bad thing, law, don't worry about that. Um, but there's, there's a significant shift. It could just in, indicate higher education. It feels like there's something that is just... You, you're no longer satisfied. Oh, interesting. I'm hearing um, Google Doll's name. Um, normally Google does you, you associate with Iris, but uh, one of my favourites is Name. And it kind of feels like this, it's like deferred dreams. Um, and there's something about having the confidence to, you, you, you've stepped into death. Death is facing your fears. It's allowing, it's facing those deepest, darkest aspects of yourself and um, it feels like you've just got the drive and determination now to to just go in any direction that you want. It's like you've, you're leaping fearlessly into the unknown. You know, if we think Death Card is the abyss, it's Pluto. Pluto's ravaged uh, through Capricorn, um, has dismantled. Capricorn rules the 10th house of, you know, government, society, um, corruption, and the shadow aspects of it as well, anyway, um, how we're seeing authority. Pluto is unearthing a lot of things. That won't get changed until we step into Aquarius, um, which is kind of, is the revolutionary. So the next 20 years are gonna be very, very significant when it comes to what Pluto has unearthed in Capricorn is gonna again get dealt with for the next 20 years. But there's a massive shift that's taken place here. For those of you that have felt kind of duck or just like life not being fantastic. I want you to think back to last 
between April and June, when Pluto moved into Aquarius, you'll have felt an ease somewhat in whatever area of life Pluto was transiting. And it's, that was a little indication of the, you know, the next 20 years. It's given you a little taster. Something has significantly altered within you. Um, that's interesting, actually. I'm seeing, so when I was in the jungle, uh, there was a chap there who um, had had a pretty tough time of it. He, had a, he was Libra, actually. Oh, I wonder if he's watching. That'll be interesting. Um, and his fav one of his favourite quotes is um, that Joseph Campbell one. The um, the cave you fear to enter holds holds the treasure you seek, and I feel like you're just ridding yourself of um, fear. This 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 is fear. The death card. I feel like you're just no longer bothered about certain aspects. You um, change no longer. This is this is a card of change. Um, the current energy we have the world card of ending cycles. We have the Six of Swords in the centre of your spread. It's Mercury and Aquarius. It's the Magician meets the Star card. It's a journey. Journey into the unknown. Death and the uh, Six of Swords together could indicate some form of like um, um, what they call death doulas. It, it feels like you've gone through a, 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 a literal death and rebirth. Um, obviously not literal, literal, but uh, the process of um, alchemy. The other card in your current energy is the Hanged Man. I believe that you've gone through some sort of sacrifice and now it's time for some sort of surrender because help is coming in whatever format this is. I don't know what it is, but it's going to be something very, very healthy for you. Your future outcome is, is, is fantastic. We have the Sun. We have the Four of Cups. This is a good thing, I'll tell you in a second. And we have the Ace of Swords. This is clarity, this is balance, and this is having the drive and determination to push the direction of your life in which way you want to go. The reason why I say that is uh, the perfect balance of the sun would equal the moon. The four of cups is the moon in cancer. So the moon um, meets the chariot. We could even say the high priestess meets the chariot. This is like higher, higher level knowledge. This is speaking to your spirit guides, your star seeds, whatever it is that you connect with. Your top row is all major arcanas, the Wheel of Fortune, the World and the Sun. This is cycles completed and now it's time to bask in the glory of joy. As Alan Watts says in regards to the change of the world, plunge into it, move with it and join the dance. And that's what the kids are doing here. They're dancing, they're playing. There's something about just enjoying life now. So 2024 is a very big year to push yourself in the direction you want to go. I believe it's already started because the Queen of Wands, and I believe, I know you're an air sign and don't get caught in genders, but I believe the, the Queen of Wands is representing you here. She is the Queen of Magnetism. And the more that we strip away those blocks, the etheric, emotional baggage, whatever it is that would trauma, the more that we shed it, the more we radiate, the more we become magnetic. And that's taking time, it's taking patience, it's taking practice, but you're getting there. Uh, seven of Pentacles is Saturn in Taurus, but it's also seventh year, which is what we're just, we're just leaving. Uh, 2023, two plus two plus three is a seven year. Um, but Saturn in Taurus, especially with Saturn here with the world, feels like um, there's a change, a cycle that's coming to a completion either in terms of your spiritual growth, the Hierophant, or perhaps we're looking at Taurus energy. Taurus rules the second house of self-worth, how we earn money. It's a Venus house, similar, you know, you guys are ruled by Venus, so you know exactly uh, the energies you're dealing with. Um, the positives coming in is the Seven of Pentacles, the Six of Swords and the Sun. I believe your hard work is paying off. And for some of you, you could be literally moving to the, into the sun or whatever that represents for you. But I just feel like you are leaving behind what no longer serves. In the Toff deck, the um, Seven of Pentacles is Lord of Failure. This is um, the Lord of Science. So this could be not leaving behind science. Science is still science. But this could be just, you know, adapting a more spiritual outlook, you know, letting go of a lot of 
preconceived beliefs that we've grown up with believing it's not really resonating with you anymore but also i kind of feel like it's just saying you've you've been patient you've worked hard and now it's time to reap your rewards and move away from the five of swords the whole idea of the six of swords get to the other side leave the five swords in behind and only continue with the ace of swords so that means letting the past go it means surrendering it means being able to power through the sacral chakra holds the uh, energy of, of, of trauma in the past the solar plexus is the wisdom to get out of it when we break through that we break through the uh, into the heart chakra now interestingly to break into the heart chakra we need to break through with that sun behind the, the hangman here that comes if we look at the um light as tarot that hand man is full of green and then you have that yellow behind the head and what we need is that to break through that's the solar plexus that's willpower that's drive it's ambition when you find that balance which you will because the sun and the moon are here together you'll break through potential negatives is the wheel of fortune the six of swords and the ace of swords i don't particularly see it as as a potential negative uh, as such, because I, I, I believe you're on the path for joy now. But it's just highlighting here that if we don't leave the five swords behind, six plus the seven uh, plus the one is the seven of swords, self-sabotage. We, we, we jump back on the Wheel of Fortune wagon and we don't want that. We want to get off the ride. We want to um, head to the sun and stay in the sun. So your next steps, we have the Queen of Wands, the Six of Swords and the Four of Cups. Um, there's there's an element of trust here as well. The Queen of Wands and the Six of Swords, there, there is something that is just being naturally drawn to you and also being repelled from you. It's reminding me of the um, Pisces reading I did. Probably the last one, actually. Could have been the week before. I don't know. It was something to do with um, um, your energy is causing chaos in this person. The more you raise your frequency, you you will naturally gravitate people towards you. You also repel them. So there's something about being aware of what's going to be yours, what you need to pour out, what you're choosing. Um, we've already spoke of the top deck with the Seven of Pentacles and the Six of Swords. The Four of Cups in the future with the top deck is luxury. I believe you're going to be living in a lot of positive energy. You're going to be living in um, success which just feels very, very good. Interesting, as I looked up there, it was 12 minutes and 48 seconds. Um, and for some reason, the, the, the one stands for, for me, the magician, this is manifestation. And then 248 is Pluto, text Pluto, 248 years to navigate the Zodiac. So the Pluto has played a very significant part in your life. And it's going to get a lot easier as it steps into Aquarius. So let's check out where the moon is, as well as the high priestess and the chariot. So that's that determination and willpower that's going to catapult you towards where you want to go. Yeah, and that's just another nod to, to recognise your power. You guys are justice. And it's with the Six of Wands, uh, which is success, and the Seven of Swords. So the whole idea is not to let the past, you know, block that blessings of the future. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue. You feels like you're... Um, you know what you want now and you're willing to take action on it. The moon is with the Knight of Swords and the King of Pentacles. Okay. For, for a lot of you, you're having subconscious dreams, possibly about past lives. Um, you've been asked to document him because there's some sort of maybe blockage there. It might be the last bit of fears. And it's, 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 it's attached to your dreams. Something to dive into. And there we have the star card with the king of swords. Fantastic. So this is drive, determination, hope, leading the way, following your true north, um, stepping into your power. The King of Swords, I kind of feel like he's representing you, especially with the High Priestess. I, I love it when the King of Swords goes with the High Priestess. This is 
being able to receive divine information and articulate it in such a powerful way that people listen. You're on a path here, and look at that. that for me, that's Pluto in Capricorn, and that's wedged with the Five of Swords, what we're trying to move away from. <laughs> you can't make it up. Libra, what a year. It's no surprise, you've got the, you've got the South Node in your sign uh, for the full year. Um, you guys rule the Seventh House. You, you, your um, um, relationships will transform. That North Node in your Seventh House could be part destined partnerships coming in. There's going to be so many um, changes for you. As long as you go with the flow, you jump into the unknown, you've got wonderful things coming. In your extended, I want to see where this sun is leading you. We'll take the energy of the sun, what we know, what we don't know. Recent past advice and potential outcome. Uh, if you can join me, fantastic. If not, let me know if this resonates. We have Sagittarius, Saturn in Taurus, Capricorn, Mercury in Aquarius, Pisces, Leo, Moon in Cap Cancer. We have Scorpio, Moon in Taurus, Venus in Virgo, Sagittarius, Moon in Sagittarius, Sun in Virgo, Moon in Libra. We have Leo, we have Taurus, Mercury in Taurus, Jupiter in Gemini, Sun in Aries, Mars in Aries, and Moon in Aquarius. We have wands, we have swords, we have cups, we have pentacles. Everyone's here. Those of you standouts, take care. See you soon. Bye.